It is a, a great interview, lots of laughs, and we thank Mike for coming on. So uh, without further ado, let's get to the uh, Michael Renzi interview. All right, guys, this man needs no introduction. He was part of the greatest hockey team the city of Belleville has ever assembled. He was an OHL champion. He is part of one of the most memorable lines in Belleville Bulls history, a top 20 scorer all time for our Bulls. During his time with Belleville, this man topped out at 175 pounds, but he did not take any shit from anybody. He had, he's a man with, uh, with one of the biggest hearts and balls the size of King Kong himself. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the greatest Balbo Bowls of all time, number nine, Mike Renzi. Oh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. What a great introduction. Hey, did you guys hear that, Kimberly? You heard that, eh? <laughs> <laughs> My girlfriend, you got to get that on record. This is recorded, eh, everybody? <laughs> There you go. There but we go. Hey, Give me you, you want to know something, hey, I got fellas? Some, I don't know if you guys had this, but I got to do it. Did you guys have these? Back then or no, <laughs> no we, we didn't have them because... Uh, I, found had, uh, I found this. I found this. I got to bring it on. No, brother. We had the, the, the big red tubes. Oh, like, they they oh, were yeah. both horns, right? Yep, um, yep, yep. But listen, you want to hear something funny? Um, yeah. No word of a lie. I never weighed. I, my first year, I weighed 144. And my last year, I weighed 155. I, 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 you know what I would do? You know what I would do? I swear to God. So the NHL scouts would come to weigh us, okay? And my brother-in-law worked for, um, you know, a mechanic shop, we'll say. And I used to tape yep. some sort of things for cars, but on my thighs, in, <laughs> inner thigh, outer thigh, and on my back and stomach. I love that. You yeah, get awesome. up to 175, yeah. No joke. Give me another 20, 20 or 30 pounds. Yeah, you, you know, it, no was, uh, it was different back then, though, eh? When, when I played, yeah. right? It was, it was bigger boys and everything. Oh, yeah. totally different. Totally different. I mean, we, we can, well, what do you want to do, Flem? Do you want to maybe just tell us a little bit about your uh, story maybe leading up to Belleville? And then, yeah. uh, you know, as yeah, a like, I just kind of wanted to know, like, what, what it was like playing in Mississauga. Like, uh, you were drafted pretty high, right? Like, you were a fourth-round pick. So, were you always one of the best well, players in your local town? or for, for, So, I, I always played at Toronto. I played for the Toronto Red Wings. And, um, and a story you don't hear too often. Um, so, when I was playing for, for the Red Wings, um, it was about my peewee year, so I would have been like five years in. Um, top line, like I'm not bringing it, but top line, right winger, whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And then the owner's uh, grandson uh, made, a, made a move to, like, to Toronto. So, so he took my spot, and then kind of everybody kind of complained, you know. So I went back to the top line. He went to the third. And then, or no, he, he got sent away or something. So all I remember is I remember walking into the dressing room. Okay, this is when I was 13 or 14, okay? So I, I walk into the dressing room, Chestwood Arenas, and, and I see him, and I walk right back out. I say, Dad, I'm done, 13 years old, Toronto Red Wings, triple hockey. And he goes, okay. And what they did was, um, so it wasn't a trade, but it was a release of the Toronto Marlies captain, I'll never forget. Um, he, he wanted a release. So Toronto Marlies said, we'll give you the release, only if we get Renzi from the Red Wings, if they release him. So it was almost like a trade. Like it was, it was that weird. Yeah. So then I went That's to Toronto awesome. Marlies. Yeah. I not um, know that. Yeah. So I went to the Toronto Marlies and then we were affiliated with a, a tier two team uh, called the Calvin Canadians. And okay. um, that's where, where my career really took off. I, I played for a coach named Greg Ireland um, and, and he made me uh, the, the player that I was. It was, uh, I mean, you're playing at 16 years old. Um, with 20 year olds and and it was the best at that time tier two team you could play for um yeah. and it was just what a great experience but that's where uh like i was running goalies like going to the stands and it was uh, it was insane like i'm telling you like not like I, now well yeah i had a, I had a i think 51 points in 48 games with 215 pems as a 16 year old like it, it was uh, yeah it was insane and then um, how I got drafted was uh, I, I thought I'd be going to, to North Bay, and then I thought for sure because the owners of Calden became the owners of Brampton for the expansion year. So I thought oh, I'm I'm going to Brampton, you, you know. And uh, I, I played in a prospect tournament in Toronto, and Floyd Crawford, everyone knows him, and Mike came up to oh, me. Oh yeah, yeah. And it's a lot different now, fellas. They like now, like kids tell you where they want to go. <laughs> when I was playing you went where you got drafted. It was not like, oh, I'm not going to go to the Sioux because it's far. It's like, yeah. I'm going to the Sioux. Like, yeah. so, or you're not uh, playing. Yeah. That, that's it. It's as simple as that. You know? Yeah. So then uh, Floyd and Mike came up to me. They just said, if we draft you, will you come? I said, absolutely. Never heard from them again. Never answered a questionnaire like I did with 10 other teams. 
Ooh. fourth round, uh, fourth round, they took me. Um, and that, and that was it. The rest was history. Yeah. Um, the big ring helped, eh? Like, but I was yeah, never for sure. I, I know this is, this is a funny story, but when I was younger, um, the big rinks, like I sucked cause I was always like a grinder, eh? Like I liked bumping and grinding. I was never a big ring player. Um, kind of until I went to Belleville and then it was, a uh, it was a huge advantage. Huge. Well, it's definitely huge to adapt to it too. Right. And like, I, I remember seeing guys that would go even after you, but, Holberg had a little bit of affiliate in like the early 2000s. Yeah. Holberg had yeah. like one of the smallest rinks there was back then. Absolutely. And then they go to yeah. Yardman, Port it's Hope like too. Yeah. Port Hope too, you know what I mean? It's like, you know, it's that's a huge adapt, right? Because you're used huge. to being in the corners all the time, battling with guys, and all of a sudden now you have so much space. Absolutely. Right? So yeah, you're kind, of, you're kind of lost, right? People don't understand that. Eh? Like, yeah. You're hockey guys, so you get it. I'm mean, another thing I don't know if you guys know about the Yardman, but um, even though you have Olympic-sized ice, everything's still symmetrical the, the dots and everything not at the yardman if you looked at the yardman before okay the circles the hashes were right against the boards so the goalies would you know like a goalie would line up to the dots to cut off his angles you couldn't the yardman because the circles were all the way to the edge of the boards yeah i don't know if you guys ever ever I do, do that oh, no, you but if you that, ever look at an if you ever look at an, an old video okay you'll see that the circles are very are literally you're right against the boards. So, uh, Mike, do you mind if we jump into the Bulls a little bit? I know. Yeah, uh, yeah, so, yeah, please uh, do. I think uh, you know one of the most famous things that happened in the town was the Bulls winning the Memorial Cup in ninety eight, ninety nine, right? So, can you walk us through that playoff run? Like, I know you guys beat Sudbury round one, Cup. right? OHL, sorry, yeah. OHL Cup, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, yeah, you guys, uh, you beat Sudbury round one, but then you beat Ottawa in round two, right? And Ottawa was supposed to be the team that year, right? They had the automatic berth in Memorial Cup. So, Absolutely. once you get past Ottawa, what are you guys thinking? Uh, I I personally was thinking we're gonna steamroll over Oshawa. I can't yeah. remember. I think it was either four four zero or four five one. But Oshawa was uh, like we we owned them during the season. Eh? Like so, once we got through Ottawa, um, we, like it was like okay, we're going. You, you know, like Oshawa, we just sometimes you just have a team's number. Yeah. You, you know, you guys are hockey. You guys know the way it goes, right? Um, oh, yeah. And we just had Oshawa's yeah. number the whole year. Yeah, they had a good goalie. They had. Uh, Ty Gardner, I think his name was the goalie. But other than that, they, they were not a they were not a deep team at all, and and they couldn't play. So again, going back to the, to the rink guys, it's I think it's a lot easier personally to adjust to a smaller rink than to a big rink. So Oshawa had one of the smallest, and in my opinion, the best rink I've ever played in the, the auditorium. But they yep. they they and they they geared their team just like Peterborough did to their arena. Yeah. Right. Um, so once once these teams like St. Mike's and um, Osh Oshawa and Peterborough came to Belleville, it, it was it was a big advantage. Yeah. Yeah, that home ice is huge, isn't it? Yeah. And then yeah. came London, right? Then came London. Um, I I got the assignment to um, shadow Rico Fada, and when I'm I'm telling you, like I mean, I was obsessed. Like I thought about that guy day in and day out. Um, he was Italian. I was Italian. I was jealous. He was just, like, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. like I wanted, it, it was simple. I just wanted to hurt him. Like, I just, I stuck him every chance I could. I, I did everything I could to do my part for the team, right? Um, but again, going into that arena, though, eh? like, going into uh, London's arena, it, it was hell. It was hot. The dressing rooms were gross. Um, like, it was disgusting. And they had guys that wanted to hurt you. Like, Metcalf and Erskine. Like, there's yeah. guys that want to slash you. And then there's guys that want to, like, break bones when they slash you. And all I remember is yeah. Metcalf being one of them, Erskine, and then Brian Allen from Oshawa. Brian Allen, too. I knew yeah. He had a good age up here. And it's totally different now. Like, now that that's all out of the game, right? Like It's out of the game. You know, these guys are whacking like that. They're getting they're – getting, they're in the penalty box and guys are scoring on the power play. The game's totally changed. It's, it, I, I don't think I could I could even play now. You, you know what I mean? My game was – was so much of the behind the scenes and, and, and the dirty work just to survive. But again, again, it's hard to say because I had to like fight for every like inch of ice. Yeah. And if you look at, at our kid line uh, and Newberry, the, the same thing, right? Like, you know, we had to battle for every inch and, and now I, I don't think there's as much battling, right? I think it's more free flow. So yeah, I don't sure. know if that was really my game. Like, even though I'm a smaller guy, people always say, like, oh, Renz, if you were playing now, you would have had a better chance. But that really, really? wasn't my, my yeah. game. You know, I like 
I liked getting in the corners, even, right? Even because that was so. in your 17, right? Even when you're 19, 20, when you're putting up big numbers, playing with Robinson and all that, you still yeah. don't think that it would have benefited you playing now? Like, you think back then was better for you, right? I think back that, then, I, I, would have, I wouldn't have thought that. Pro. I still had over a hundred pins, eh? Like I, I love getting yeah. into it. And one of the things, like if uh, it was my, my second ex-wife <laughs> read, read something when we got into an argument once, she googled me and it said, uh, "In when I was playing um, one of my million semi-pro teams, said Renzi loves uh, to get under the skin of his opponents, yeah. right? Like that's what I like. I really enjoyed being uh, like, like a rat, you know. Um, it was a role that that I loved, and obviously, I even my last year." Um, 100 points, that was great. I mean, anybody can get 100 points playing with Robinson stage. Let's not kill ourselves. Yeah. But I also had over 100 PIMs, I think, too, right? So mm -hmm. I, I would never shy away from that part of the game. It's just not not who I am, right? Yeah. By no means was I a tough guy. Like, I mean, were, by no means was I a fighter. But I just loved, loved, you know, loved You loved the, the grindiness. And, and it's Absolutely. funny how you say that when you're, when you're a small guy like that, because typically that's someone that's a little bigger, right? And that doesn't oh, weigh 145 or 50 pounds. Absolutely, yeah. Like, so, yeah. I mean... That's yeah, but I get, it, I get it from my mother, right? She's crazy, eh? So I got it from my mother. <laughs> so I got a quick question while we're here because yeah. I don't want to bring anything bad up. But So did you not get married one time at Center Ice at the at the I, I did. Was that I the did. second wife or no? <laughs> that was my second second. So, what, uh, so how did you talk her into that? Like, I don't know. Someone <laughs> told me that. And I'm like, that's a cool yeah, story. So, so how that worked was um, we were both coming out of um, bad marriages. Like, they, they ended bad. Um like really bad. So then uh, she had the big Italian wedding. I already got, like, I got married. Like, you think that's a funny story? I, my first wedding, you'll never guess where that was. I that, know. Okay. That was me and her, me and Amber. <laughs> we had to be in Columbus, Georgia to play for the Columbus Cottonmouths. We went okay. to Windsor, they, like, to go get my visa. You know, they always say pull over, you know, ready yeah. to get my visa and everything. They go, who is this? I'm like, oh, she's my common law wife. Nope. And I go, what do you mean? I <laughs> She's only staying for a month. They're like, no, she's not. The car's full. I go, but I got to be in, in Atlanta, like Columbus, you know, in a day and a half. I'm in Windsor. What do you want me to do? <laughs> Turn around and get married. Turned around. Oh, no way. <laughs> Courthouse, $334. <laughs> married. Yeah. And the same yeah, day? So, but same. It was in hours. Yeah. No way. That's funny. And believe it or not. So, so when I went to, when I got traded, so I, I went to Columbus and then a team after that, I was talking to a guy and another guy had to do the same thing to get his girlfriend over. Yeah. Okay. If you get, if you get the wrong border security guard, right? Like yeah. they're not just going to let somebody come over for six months. They know you're there for the season, but yeah. So my second um, wedding, um, we couldn't have the big time wedding like that. You can't have that again. She'd already done it. Um, yeah. We she'd already done it. You know, it was our second marriage, and, and we thought, uh, what better way to celebrate? We just had a few people there, um, and it went, uh, it went really well. It, you know, like it was, it was an exciting time. I, I always uh, had thanked Christina for for allowing me to do that. You know, um, she was in eight months pregnant at the time, and that was oh, another really? reason we, we wanted to be married. Like. I me, mean, I didn't care about her family, you know, old school Italian. They wanted to be married before, before Rocco was born. Okay. But um, that was yeah, that was a great memory for sure, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of cool, like, uh, yeah. you know, getting married at the rink. So, and especially, like you say, for her to allow that, good on her. Because uh, yeah. even though it's a second wedding, not every girl would do that. Yeah, well, if you want to know a funny story. <laughs> well, I like, think it's this, awesome. I think <laughs> like, this, this might be a little bit of TMI, but uh, who cares? <laughs> you guys got me on. So, <laughs> at, uh, at one of my court appearances, um, that they wanted to kind of limit my time at the rank. And the judge said, I Googled you guys. You guys got married at the rank. Michael lives at the rank. Like, I'm not, like, that's where he belongs. So that's yeah. how uh, important the rank is to me. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. no, for sure. For yeah. sure, right? And I think we all kind of feel like that, too. Like, you know, you get away from it for a while, and you're like, ah, this is like, like, even the COVID when hockey was away. Like it, and yeah. it still is kind of in a sense, right? But it's yeah. like you're missing something, right? You're missing something, missing something in your life. Like, like, I want to go to the games. And, and you helped out with the Belleville Sens. I don't know if you did last year, but was it last yeah, year? No, helped out, no, helped out the Belleville Sens a couple of years ago, which that yeah. was fantastic. Um, but, the, but the biggest thing is, like, a lot of people have questioned me. Um, I'll never forget one guy came up to me, like, so I do timekeeping. For, for yeah, that's kids, what housing, housing, oh. anything. No, no, I do like minor hockey time. Yep. Me, okay. Like 12 bucks a game. I think the highest you, you make is like 30. Okay. 30 bucks <laughs> for an hour and a half. Right. So it's not about the money. So one guy comes up and goes, he goes, Renz, he goes, you either need the money 
or you hate your wife. <laughs> you know I mean? you know, but, uh, no, I, I was saying to uh, I'm saying to my to my new girlfriend now because we we've met during COVID. I said, you have no idea like like what my life really is like in, in the winter time. It's all about the rank. Like the, there's no place I'd rather be than on a Friday night, um, timekeeping house league for twelve bucks an hour with my son, two games, midget hockey, because you're you're back, you're involved back with with the game. Okay, yep. the refs, I know everybody, the coaches, you're talking. Rocco's my son's playing mini hockey. Um, where else would you rather be on a Friday night for a couple yeah. hours? Right. And that's a good um, point too, right? Like yeah. you know everybody. It's not just about going to a game and sitting there. You know, you're seeing all these old faces yeah. and everybody. That's right. so, I love it. People. It's like your common by. thing, right? It's like right. you know, some people got to go to the bar every Friday night because that, that's they're see the same right. people. <laughs> well, yours yes. is a different way. It's it going to the. You're rich. right. I never heard that. You're totally right. That's it, eh? That's mm -hmm. exactly what it's like. The the rink guys, right? I love them all. Um, and I, I said to Kim, I go, a huge part of my social life is the rink. You, you know, like it, it really is. And I was very, I'm very fortunate enough to work for Bobo Minor Hockey and, and do that, you know, and then they're great people. And I just, and I love, I love being around kids hockey too. So it's awesome. Yeah. And, and for sure. Well, maybe I'll just ask what, like, we'll talk one thing on that just because it was, it kind of goes with that. Now you coached Quinny with Matt Goody one year, didn't you? Are you, yeah, you were assistant, Quinny a little assistant, bit or something, right? Yeah. I was just a coach with him. And then yeah. I took over the team the next year got fired i think it was like november and you know I, I hate to say this um you know but it was god how am i gonna say this okay as hockey players it was a team of losers and, and I'm, I'm saying that not in personality but they didn't hate to lose yeah. okay i knew i was done with the team when i was we were in london for a tournament we were getting our asses kicked by the london team and the Hunter brothers made it very evident that they were there because they were standing on the glass. So we come in after the second period. Oh, okay, we're coming after the second period. We are getting shit kicked. Coming after the second period, my inter the intermission speech was very simple. Do whatever the hell you got to do to be noticed from the Londonites. That's who these are. They are letting you know that they're there to watch you, mm -hmm. you now let them know that you want to be noticed by them. I said, do whatever you got to do, okay? And I mean, like I was saying, like, yeah. you got to do whatever you got to do, okay? <laughs> and I said, the Hunter brothers are the Hunter brothers, okay? And I went into a little bit more explicit, um, and nobody did anything. And I, after the game, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. everybody's yeah. laughing in the room, and everybody's joking, like, we didn't lose. And it was embarrassing for me. Um, it, it didn't work out. The, the, the kids were again, great kids and everything, but they just, they, they didn't enjoy well, winning like I did and they didn't hate losing like I did. So, you know. Well, when, when you look at like, when you look at certain teams and I've played on winning teams and, and bad teams and there's certain quantities in the players or qualities in the players where they, there's, if there's reasons why they're winning, it's not just because they're good at skill, good skills, or can shoot. No, they know no. how to win. They have that in them. They'll do that extra drive. You know, whatever it is. Maybe they're not playing their greatest game, but you know what? They're starting making big hits, or they're looking at little faceoffs. They're into the game. They're they're ready to fucking do it. Where yeah. where losing teams will only go so far, and then it's but then it's okay to lose. It's a game we lost. It's over. <laughs> it. You know, we'll play tomorrow, guys. It's fine. Yeah. I fucking hated that. That drove me nuts. That's right. And the that's, only that's guys that go. The guys that go any farther are the none of those guys that are used to losing will go anywhere. Doesn't matter if you, how many points you got, you'll never make the NHL if you're okay with losing. That's it. No, it, it, that's, it's, it's, a, a simple it's that one. simple. So yeah. what you're saying is true. And, and even if you're down by five goals, let's say, and you got scouts there, go do something. You know, make do something. Do something. Do something. You know, yeah. Get in front of the goalie. Like yeah. I, I look at, I'm a big sense man. I'm wearing a sense hat. Brady Kachuk, he doesn't go end to end, but he gets yeah. in the fucking goalie's face. He's Absolutely. hitting guys. He's he engaging. Like, yeah. And it's like. He shows up every game. You know, you can do that. You don't have to be that same player. But Absolutely. scouts fucking see that and they go, look at this guy finishing every single check. Absolutely. Right? Every it's single check. Five point. nothing. He's finishing every check. <laughs> yep. He's winning 60% of his face off. So little That's things it. like that. And that's yep. what's the difference between guys that have more success and go to the next level, even if it's even if it's not even NHL, maybe it's uh, um, maybe it's minor hockey to junior, right? Sure, I totally agree. Um, one of the things yeah. that um, it, I know there's all these analytics now, and there's all that stuff. Um, at the end of the day, I remember going to Floyd Crawford's funeral. I remember asking Lou Crawford about this. Um, 
And I said, what do you think of all this? Because oh, he's yeah. a scout now. And, and he did like, the thing, when I was playing with the Bulls, it was very simple. If you win the battles along the half wall, chances are you're going to win the game. That's it. it it's, it's very simple. Yeah. You know what I mean? If you win the one-on-one -on -one battles and there's a thousand of them a game, you will most likely win the game. Yeah, it's going to give you better yeah. odds. It's simple. Simple. And, it's and very you, were, simple. you were always a guy like that would do anything to win, right? Because I always remember the thing about you is if something happened to a teammate, like if someone even so much as tripped Matt Stadier or something, or someone someone needed to be straightened out. I remember my dad was in there. We watched. You were pretty young then. But he, he would say, don't worry. Renzi will fucking stick him later or something like that. And sure enough, <laughs> 20, 30 minutes later, you would always fucking yeah. Yeah. remember that guy or whatever, right? Slash or something like that. And yeah, I, I had just, a good Just memory. do the little things, the game within the game, right? <laughs> that, that's right. It, it, was, it was just doing those, those little things. And I loved throwing um, the good player, like, especially like my first year, uh, you know, when we were leading, when we were going into, again, against Ottawa and then in, into the Mem Cup and everything, we played against the top line, right? Because their top line, Obviously, Killer, Brian Killer wanted to put his top line against us. We played against the Mark Bells and Nick Boynes. And for guys like me, Newberry, and Robinson, that was a treat to yeah. try and, try and like, again, just, I hate to say hurt, but yes, you know what I mean? Like, that's why, like, if you watch Michael Renzi in practice and Michael Renzi in a game, you, you would have thought I was a ballerina in practice. I, I don't know how to hit without going absolutely balls out. Yeah, and, and in a practice, you, do you can't do it every single practice and hurt teammates. And I, I don't hurt know yourself. how to do it. Right? Yeah. That's it. And if people, if people say, why don't you play men's league? Why don't you just I go, no, I'll play pickup where I won't touch anybody and it's fun yeah. and I'm joking and I don't back check and I don't do anything. But <laughs> anytime there's a competition, it's either 100% or it's zero. You know, yeah. and I was very fortunate that um, the, the coaching staff let, let – let me do that when I was when I was younger, and you know the Newberries and Robinson stages. Like my whole career was based on those guys, and then the leadership that we had on that team, like especially the championship team, was was phenomenal. You know? Well, maybe you can just touch on like uh, uh, Lou as a coach and and kind of what what his philosophy was. Or you you kind of have a little bit and and kind of so it, it was very it was very simple. Um, do whatever you got to do. Like I hate to say this, but and then in that era, it was going to the bars. Right, you know yeah. what I mean? At 17 years old, it was, oh, you didn't go to school today? Uh, no problem. You know, like, I remember going to, I remember going to Quinny and, like, going to the Jenner saying, like, I don't even know where my locker is. Like, let alone the pro. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I during I our it. playoff run, like. I yeah, mean, like, I, what are they going to do? Like, we're going to the fucking no, like, like, what, are you, what are you going to do? That, that's it. it got, like, I, I had foods. I had a foods class. I had a parenting class. I hope you could cook. A screen <laughs> education class. And a bubble bulls credit, <laughs> you know. Yeah. Like, um, no, it, it it was come to the rink to play, and it, it was like I, again. This is it's so bad to say now, but um, our philosophy was my first year. You, we didn't have a weight room. We had a bike that nobody rode. It was very simple. How many guys? How many times have you seen a guy score a goal from the weight room? That, that's it. Like that. That was the mentality when I played. You know, it's with the, so different with than the now, but uh, it's so different than now. You know, it was you just come to work. I don't care what you guys do after you come to work. I'll never forget this. I swear to God, it was either it was either my third year or my or my last year. Can you imagine a coach saying this now? Could you, Jim Halton? Okay, yeah. we're we're losing to Sudbury. I think like we were like number one or number two. They're like seven, right? We're in Babel. It's a Saturday night. His pep talk going into the third period. This was his pep talk. Listen, it's Saturday night in Belleville. You have a day off tomorrow, and you don't play until Wednesday. Win this up and game. And we all knew. Like, you know, we all knew. You know Bars and women. Yeah. And like that, that, was, that, was, that was the talk. Yeah. And then we ended up winning. I swear to God. You know what I mean? I think Spets the was The boys are all fired up. Like, yeah. That's, that's it, right? Like, it was, um, it was just – it was very different when I played. And everybody knew Belleville. So when I went semi-pro. Belleville was always the town. It didn't matter if you were from Alberta or you were from Nova Scotia. Everybody knew Belleville was the best junior hockey city to play. Like, like it really was. Yeah, it really was. Um, Is it because of the small town feeling and, and you know, you got, feeling, everybody knows everybody kind of thing? Or? The fans, everybody knows everybody. Um, girls, the, the, the team, <laughs> you know what I mean? The, the, Great the bars schooling. Little, little Texas. Yeah, you know, like, it was just, it was, it was purely – uh, hockey and it was a hockey town um, like it is now that was still a hockey town yeah. um, but it was 
the best place to play in junior. And I don't know if a lot of people like me saying this, but I, I think, uh, you know, it is still a junior town and I would love to see a junior team come back here. You know, like I, I'm a junior type guy, nothing against the Sens, obviously, oh, yeah. but I'm, I'm, my heart is more towards, uh, more towards junior, you know? Well, and you know what? You're hundred percent. Like uh, the community itself has not, the full community itself has not adapted to the Sens. To the Belleville Sens, it hasn't, it hasn't had an opportunity either. There's been no playoff runs, which has yeah. killed them last year with Corona, and, and maybe this year too if they get a good, if they get going. But you're right, like, and people say it. But at the end of the day, the Bulls are gone. There's reasons why they're gone. The arena didn't right. get fixed up. We can. Yeah. I'm not going to say any names. Yeah. Somebody, the group fucked up, and that's yeah. why they're gone. Absolutely. In the future, we got the Sens. I be, I doubt we we're going to have them forever. So you know, no, hopefully I don't we can have a junior team. We might have one in five years. Who knows? Yeah. But I think yeah. if the Sens ever leave and go somewhere else, the Belleville Sens I'm talking about, if they ever go yeah. somewhere else, I think an OHL team will come back. Because I of the, what too. we said, right? Especially with the new rink or the well, renovated rink. Another thing, too, is like, so so when, you know, it's it's it, when I was playing, um, it's still an older community. Like, so now you go to the rink on a Saturday night, okay? So, so fan wants to go to the rink on a Saturday night. Well, they know, okay, Mike Renzi is – um, second line right wing, and we know he's second line power play, and we know this, this, and this. When you go to a Senators game, yeah. they can go down, they can go up. It's really hard to identify yeah. with an AHL team. It's probably the hardest, you know, because mm -hmm. you've got players going up and down, so you kind of don't know who's, who's going to be there that night. Oh, I can't, I can't wait to go see, uh, you know, number nine play or, or whatever, you, you know, whatever yeah. his name is. Oh, he just got called up two hours ago. Well, yeah. well there, there, there goes the $50 in tickets I just spent because I thought we were going to go watch them play, right? I think Belvo identifies and they want to be a part of the team. I think the, the worst thing I ever saw um, from George Burnett and that group was getting rid of the booster club. You know, that's what oh, I is said. that what happened? They got rid of the Yeah, booster. I said, hey, man. You know, I didn't like, know that because that yeah. they benefit them. Or, yeah, like, the booster club was huge, man. For like, they did. And that's they did the hardcore fans too. Oh, right? they're they sure. pissing them dinners. off. Yeah, Christmas dinners for us. Oh, I didn't know that. They, they were. They did pins for us. They did everything for us for our families. When they got rid of them, then I said, "Nah, this is this is not." You know, the, the Vaughn family. That's exactly what it was. A family, family. right? They, right. If you didn't have a place to live, I lived at brad's house for a week or two i lived at doc's house for a week or two when i needed somewhere right um like it was it was a family and they brought it down to the team which you know the team was was a family too like we'd, we'd go 20 20 guys strong to the bar 20 guys strong to tuesday night movies you know like yeah. it was it was really like a like a family you know yeah, yeah and i think i've actually heard a lot of negative stuff maybe uh, towards Burnett, you know, and not, nothing against him as a coach or whatever, but there was some other stuff he, he just kind of got rid of, you know, where it pissed people off. Absolutely. Right? And the club less and less coming. over the years, you know, you get less fans over the years, right? So I think that was one of the reasons why they were gone. Not the Absolutely. reason, but definitely one of them. Absolutely huge. If they were still getting 3,500 fans a game, standing room or even 3,000, yeah. come on. But when you're getting 1,500, I mean yeah. – the running of the lot, you know. Remember during the Memorial Cup days, I mean, that rink was packed like five deep standing room kind of thing. Oh, it was insane, eh? Yeah. Like, yeah. It was insane. You had the hack sign going. Oh, yeah. yeah. The you sign. really luck. Like, I don't know how they could see, you know, but what an atmosphere. I'm telling you, oh, yeah. what an atmosphere to play in. Um, you you could not help to be pumped. Like, if, if you weren't pumped up for that game, like, nothing would ever pump you up. Yeah. You know, like, and, and they were, again, loyal fans. Um like the best and, and I've made Belleville home. Um, I, I will never leave, you know, uh, it's just, a, it's a great community. You know, it yeah. really is. It is amazing. Yeah. Like, I think the bulls were a big part of that too, right? Everyone wanted to go to the bulls on Wednesday and Saturday night kind of thing. It just, it was the thing to huge. do in town. Huge, huge. And that's why I, I hope and I pray that one day, um, a junior team does come back here again. No offense to anybody that loves the Sens, or I mean, I think it's great that they 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 took over. It's better than nothing. But I just think this is a junior uh, a junior town. Oh, I, I'd one hundred percent agree with that too, right? Like, yeah. and it's adapting to the players and knowing, hey, we just drafted this guy. He's a first rounder. You know, we're waiting for him, oh, and then no. we know we got him for four years unless he's traded. Mm -hmm. Where the pro leagues, yeah, you got some tr drafts, but there's so many trades and so many signings that, and then yeah. the guy will sign for a year and he's gone. How many guys get signed for a year and they're gone in the HL? Tons. That's it. That doesn't happen down. in junior, right? So, no. I mean, no. it's more of a U.S. way to do it. Um, they Absolutely. maybe they, they're not as they just 
come to watch the game. A lot of the U.S. cities, no offense to them, but they don't even know the game like Canadians do, especially no. the Southern states. You know, yep. they don't. They don't yep. know all the rules. They love the fight. They I, love the scoring, but they're not involved as much as we are probably. Right? I guess we could say, I, I guess we would say the, the United States maybe is entertainment where in Canada, maybe it's passion. That's true. Mm-hmm. And that's what you I, know, yeah, I that's you know, I guess you can describe it like that, right? You I know, think that's a I'm great way to describe it. But, you know, it, with this, it's, I'm going to watch my team, my team, my guys, you know, yeah. I think they identify yeah. with the players, right? Yeah, 100%. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I like that. Uh, I like that way to think of it, though. The entertainment and then the passion, you know. Yeah. Is that, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. You know, uh, I just thought about that now, eh, boys? You know? <laughs> there you go. Go. <laughs> We're going to use that one again. <laughs> <laughs> well, maybe you could tell us about maybe some, like, some of the teammates you have with the Bulls. Um, you know, yeah. obviously playing with Robinson. I remember one time, so he lived across the road, around the corner from where I live, but across the road from my buddy. And he had his, like, he had his, I think he had a white car or something. And it was he had a white, uh, uh, he had like, a, like a Bronco or something. It was covered mustard and ketchup or something one day. Yeah. You remember that? What was yeah. that about? I, I do because it happened to me. <laughs> you know, oh, it happened to you too. It happened to me. I was, uh, a, but this wasn't funny. Eh? That this one, I was pissed. So <laughs> I met my first wife, beautiful blonde, right? And all of a sudden, like, that's all I cared about was Amber. Okay, that's all I care about, you, you know, and shit. So then uh, I went for a date with her and I parked in like the, so I went to, I think it was Krabby Joe's at the time because that's where yeah. I met her. And I came out, and I swear to God, my 92 red Corsica, you couldn't tell. So what they did was, oh, the man. bastards, so what they did was they took um, sardines and they put it in the heating vents. It was winter, oh. okay? So they stuck it oh, like, you know, where the windshield is. Yeah. So then they put, then they put, um, either syrup or molasses all over the car, okay? Then white powder, eggs, and toilet paper. Holy shit. How do you get that off? Boys, like, I'm telling you, I was pissed. I was pissed. I, like, literally, so scrape off the the windshield, okay? Like, scrape it off. And then I went to, I think it was Petro Canada at the time, where college and uh, North Front is. I went through the car wash, like, two or three times. Yeah, so that so Nate got that. You want to hear a good Nate Robinson story? Yeah, this this is good. This is good. Um, so it's it's our last year, and the Kings because he's a Kingston boy, right? He was getting interviewed by Kingston, CKWS, whatever, all the time. So they go, "Hey, Nate, congratulations on being named to the first you know team team All Star." His response: "What do you expect? I'm the leading goal scorer of the league." Holy <laughs> No way. <laughs> I thought, my God, I love this guy. That uh, was him. And he, but he didn't think that I, that was just a normal thing to him. Yeah, like, yeah. normal. Like, I should be. Yeah. Well, who, who, that why was normal. I like, be? like, why would you even say, of course. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah. but, oh, buddy, that's and, my favorite. I swear to God, my that's favorite awesome. Robinson and, story. And give yourself a little credit, too, because I, you were the second leading scorer in the league that year, weren't you? Like, I think at one point it was Robinson, you, and then Newberry was fourth, even though Newberry got traded that time. Right? Newberry was fourth, and yeah. I think Spetsa was third. Spetsa was yeah. third, yeah. Oh, shit, yeah. really? But I was second team all star. I lost out to uh, Corey Pecker. So I, I just remember uh, I just remember the guys giving me the gears on that one. Hey, one quick so, story, quick story back to Nate here. Did you and Nate yeah. get in a fight in your first uh, in rookie camp? First. Yeah. First, first time. First. Yeah. Uh, dropped the gloves. Yeah. And all I remember is uh, the little bastard, he just tr- t- tried to wrestle. You know what I mean? To and I wanted to fight. You know what I mean? Just trying to wrestle me, like grabbing my pants and like bear hugging me. Like it was just weird. Um, but hey, back in those days, hey, like we had so we had McIver, we had Policelli, we had me, we had Newberry, we had Justin Grady. Those were the rookies trying to make it on the team. Like yeah. it was all fights. Like a lot, a lot of people say, Ren's like. Uh, like you never had to drink or you never got initiated. You know, the only thing I had to do for initiation was go in the sweat box. And that was fun. You, you know what I mean? Like that was building camaraderie. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like it was, it was, it was, a, it was a thing, but we never had to do those drink games or anything. Uh, one, because all our rookies drank anyway, but we were like, <laughs> we had really tough, uh, real tough rookies my first yeah, year. For sure. but our heavyweight of the team was Nick Policelli, who was a rookie. Yeah. He, he was the heavyweight, you, you know. And that's so, probably a huge reason why you guys won it that year too, right? Because that, that adds so much depth, right? If you got, yeah. if you got rookies that can all play, can all fight, they're all tough. You're, you're, you're not getting pushed the top on. line. 
Yeah. yeah, we we were we were really team tough, eh? Like we really were. And then and then we had Lawmaster and Paulo Celli that were legit. Like Lawmaster like toned it down because it was obviously it was an overager. We didn't need him more on the ice. But yeah. Nick Paulo Celli was like he was a heavyweight. He was fighting twenty roles that were heavyweights, really? right? Like, yeah. yeah, like that's. And, and, and then again, then you had your team toughness, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Ryan Reddy, he, was, he was he was a crazy tough guy. Oh, he was funny. He was yeah. tough. Oh my god, I'll never forget. He, the guy used to have a different stick, like an all wood stick, to kill penalties just because like the splash guys. You, you, you know what I mean? Like <laughs> that's funny, that's just the gold whack guys. Yeah, like I'll never forget like seeing him coming back from I think it was Vancouver or Calgary's camp. Um, he came back a little bit later into training camp. And I'm walking in. And I'm going, who the hell is this beast? Yeah, you know, I thought I thought it was a, I was a man, you know, you know, like. But he he was the best day. Like Ryan, Ryan Reddy, he was he was the best captain I ever had. Like that yeah. guy, he treated us like gold as rookies, and he treated everybody like with respect. Yeah, so it was good. Yeah, and that's almost a- what you need to win, right? Like you got the you got the leadership, and you guys had what Pap was Papano on that team? Yeah, Papano on Papano, the team. Papano, Chichu. Chichu. Come what on. were those yeah. guys like? Because they, I mean, uh, to us, I was a young guys. kid, right? Like. Those yeah. guys were like NHL stars to me. Yeah, like, yeah. They, they were like phenomenal. Yeah, when I went to the first camp, when I went, I'd say probably the first two weeks, when those guys all came back, that's when I knew I said, okay, like, like I'm not going to have an NHL career. You know what I mean? Like, there's, there's these guys, and then there's me. I'm going to try my best to have like a little career, sure. But I, I quickly knew that they were in a different need, those guys. You know what I mean? The Chichos and Papinos um, and, and the Reddies. But Chichos and Papano, like they, they were sick. Like they were legit superstars, man. Yeah. They, they, they were awesome. Um, well, great Chichu had, too. what, 52 goals? Or, he led the NHL one. Yeah, he led the NHL one. And then he dropped way off. But Jesus, I, I, I think one year. Injury, I don't know what happened, right? Yeah. But um, he, he was a great guy. Like, I mean, that team, um, all four years, like we were just such a, such a good team we always did stuff together um you know it was uh it was awesome you know it's so funny because like i i i would tell you stories and you'd be like no way well you guys wouldn't but people would hear it they'd be like oh my god we gotta call somebody we gotta sue somebody this is to us that was like that was was fun that was fun that was all part of it you know what i mean like there was no hazing there was no nothing like that like it was all fun it was awesome um i truly enjoyed it yeah I truly yeah. enjoyed. And if any of my kids went through the same experience that I did, I'd be happy. Really? Hockey, hockey players seem to have a different personality, right? You can take a little more like that thing. You know, some things that people would consider, you know, bullying or hazing, like, you know, we consider that fun, right? It's team building. It's, uh, it's getting Absolutely. together with the guys for sure. A hundred, a hundred and fifty percent. You know what? Like, again, like I identified more with the hockey players, you, you know what I mean? Than, than friends back home. Like it was yeah. just, it was just different. They're, hockey players are just, just a different breed. It doesn't matter how old you are. Mm-hmm. Right, it really is. Um, we're gentlemen, you know. We're all gentlemen. We're all very polite. Hockey players are known for that too, right? Yeah. Um, and you know, ever since you know, you guys know, ever since you're you're young, you know, you're playing AAA, you're wearing a tie, you're wearing yeah. a like you know a blazer or whatnot, you know. Um, but you're you know, taught so, respect in a way where you can be with the boys. That's what I was like for. when you look at the locker room talk. If you were to look at the locker room talk, so you go into talk to a parent or a coach or another it's totally different right you know the difference you know when to have respect you know when to shoot shit absolutely kind of be yourself right yeah and a lot of people that don't play sports especially hockey they don't get it they think it's just they they, they, they really don't um the one thing we had in our room was uh what you hear here stays here see here stays you know one of those lines you know that's what it is right the the, the dressing room was you know like the vegas thing what happens here stays here whatever there it is you know uh, whatever that saying is yeah so uh bell vegas there you go bell vegas and then when we went on a losing streak then he like he actually put a crew for you in for a little bit louis oh really Um, and then we called it (laughs) balcatraz oh that's not who is another guy so chris rutledge right he was your great guy what was he like because he was uh, around I, the ranks forever, right? And then he kind of got, got some got stories about Rutt, too. Eh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, so he, here's, here's a story about Rutt, okay? And this, this describes who Chris Rutledge is and who he was to me. So yeah. Michael Renzi, um, his rookie year, first game in Kitchener. I have family in Kitchener. I have my family from Mississauga, which is only 40 minutes away. So here we go. They're, they're going to the, the auditorium to watch watch. The Bulls play the Rangers. So, okay, you know, whistle goes, Michael's first shift. I line up, and it was a, it was a neutral zone faceoff. And uh, 
Richard Kazda, I know his name now, fucking guy slashes me. You know, I'm like, oh, okay. Like before the puck drops, behind the leg. Drop the gloves, he stands up. All I remember is like being brought up on the ice. So it was oh, a one boy. punch. Yeah, broke my nose. But at that time, he also took the helmet off when he, when he hit me, landed on the ice. So I was bleeding. So when I came to, it was Rutledge and Shilton, but Rush, Rutledge was holding me. He had the back of my head because I was bleeding and my nose. We're, I'm skating off, you know, with Rutledge. And now it's just him, okay? So now he's holding me. A fan says something. I don't know what he says. Rut lets me go, <laughs> okay? And tries, okay, uh, but at that time, you had the key with the, with the, like, the hockey stick handle. Oh, you know, yeah. like, <laughs> and jumped up, tried hitting the guy. That's Chris Rutledge. You know what I mean? Like, Picking up. He's part of the team. He's right in there, right? Oh, yeah. You want to say something to, to Michael Renzi, who just got knocked out? No problem. I'm going to try to hit you with, with yeah, the, was... the shaft of the key, right? Like, he was, he was the best. Um, he gave the – they had him give – like, could you imagine 17 years old with my family? The first person we met from the organization, like, in the Balbo Bowls Arena, the Yardman, was him. He gave the tour. I no couldn't way. believe it. Yeah, no like, holy shit, man. Did he, have, did he have any Molson Golds with him? Oh, <laughs> that's what it was. Like, so that's what it was like. That's, that's it. You know it. So there, it yeah. was a Rutz Bar and Grill yeah. after the game, right? Yeah. It was parents and everybody that could – Molson Golden, right? Um, yeah, Molson Golden. Yeah, I remember the, the – who told me? Kanapka told me that um, – they got okay, so when they went on their road trips because they, they were far out of all right, yeah. Uh, killer okay, would uh, it was a case of beer after every game, but you could only drink it after the Sunday game, so they had three cases okay. of beer for the whole team. Like, that's no insane to hear that now, yeah. yeah. yeah you guys know, would thing, go crazy if they did that now, right? Like, it's just, oh, yeah, like, everything God, it would just... be all over the news, the team would be shut down. Holy yeah. smoke, it you know, but that's just that's just the way it was, right? Our uh. No, it was just it was a different world, but uh, I wouldn't trade it for anything. And it, it really, uh, it really was a great time in my life. Yeah. Yeah, and I love that story. Like, because earlier you talked about everything being a family, right? And you're yeah. talking about the guys going to the bar, the guys going to the movies, and then you know uh, something happens. Well, what's your trainer do? Right? He's part of that family. He's picking up for you. He's not just you know he he you know and, I, and guys would think oh well you shouldn't do that. Well, guess what? He's saying you know what we're we're all together. I don't care if you're the Absolutely. trainer. The manager, yep. we're a team, and that's Absolutely. and that's what makes it fun because you're like, holy shit, this guy's sticking yep. up for me. Guess yep. what? You're gonna go do something for him next, and that's, and that's how things work out, right? So you know, and it's so funny. A lot of people don't get this, and people might think I'm an idiot, but when I when I time keep, I feel part of of the team. I feel part of the referees. You know yeah. what I mean? Like we all talk, we go after. It's it's nice to be a part of something. You know, and just to be back in the game of, of some of some sort, whether yeah. even just being a timekeeper, it still is like, oh, I'm I'm just a part like with the lines and with the referees, like we're together. And and listen, like I'm snapped. I'm like when coaches try and go after the refs, like I lose it. You know what I mean? Like it feels, like, oh yeah, like it's you're, you're you know, into it then. Yeah. Sometimes it gets bad, you know. But uh, that's just a part. I got a funny timekeeping story for you. So. I think we're looking this for a timekeeper, aren't we, broke? Like this is hilarious, eh? Right? This is hilarious. So this coach, it's my first triple A game. Okay, because I only do like really uh like like double A and like that was for bubble water hockey. So Nick Myers calls me, okay, let's do this. So I'm looking at this coach and now I can't remember his name. Oh for shit's sake. So this coach is snapping at his players. Like, I mean, like, losing it. I got to get his name, son of Little John, Frank Little John. So okay. he's <laughs> snapping at, at his players. I'm like, this guy's a psychopath. Well, it was the second period, and uh, it was there was a penalty. And, you know, the, the whistle blew just as the Quinny player had to get out. So I let him out. He loses it, okay? He had let him out before. So I yell out, explanatory, you know what I mean? So, you know, we yell at each other a little bit. His assistant yells at me, whatever. Okay, fine. Come afterwards, uh, it was at the third period. I'm like, this guy's still going on. He's going on at the rest. I go, who is this idiot? I look, Frank Littlejohn. I go up to him after the game. Okay, so I go, hey, Frank. So he turns around. And he probably thinks I was it. So I had my hand on I make sure I had my hand on I go, hey, you beat me up like five years ago when we were playing pro. It was no hilarious. Yeah. And then when I told him it was in Elmira, he kicked the shit out of me. Yeah. That's such but a we, small we had a good laugh about it. But again, here's another thing about hockey players. We yelled at each other. 
okay, like like through like I was a timekeeper. Here's it, but it didn't continue afterwards. You know yeah. what I mean? We didn't say meet in the parking lot or, or anything <laughs> like that. You, you know what I mean? It was we yell at each other, and afterwards we're shaking hands. It's done. It's That's over, what hockey's all about. Over it. That's yeah. what hockey's all about. I think hockey teaches you that too. Like it teaches you that you know things stay on the ice, right? Like well, once it's done, Absolutely. once the game's done. And you know, you guys yeah. go at it for sixty minutes. You can, you know, you can go have a beer after, right? Doesn't matter what Absolutely. happens in the game. Yeah, a hundred percent. You know, there'd be fights between some of our players in practice. It's got heated. Um, that's just the way it goes sometimes. You know. Yeah. Hey, Mike, can we uh, and, quickly and I circle have back a, just to the? Uh, oh, go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Say what you were saying. I was saying. Can, can, just... yeah. yeah. can we just circ quick, uh, circle back quick to the uh, the Memorial Cup run? So when you guys play London, right? And I think you had uh, two goals in the clincher been, uh, against Ottawa, too. But anyway, when you guys are going into game seven, because it was you guys were up 3-1, if I remember correctly, right? So going into game seven, come back to Valvo, what are you thinking there? Like, uh, what are the nerves going into a game seven? With, with London? Yeah. Yeah, so basically, um, I'd been through that scenario. I did a game seven with Calden, and we got absolutely shit kicked. Like, like it was, the, it was the, like for the championship. We got shit kicked. So that I was scared. Like, I'm thinking, not again, man. Like, yeah. second year in a row. Uh, I went out for um, pregame to Buffet Garden with Michael Jacobson. And uh, they, they'd offered us. So what, what Lou did was he put um, before, like, they offered us, like, you know, a bonus like as an incentive to win, um, you know, and then the trip to the Bahamas. And then yeah, trip to the Bahamas. And then he, uh, he said, okay, write the initial of somebody you want to win this game for, you know, and that was, that was his strategy. And, you know, that was, that kind of, you know, made it, made it real. Cause I put my, my grandfather's initials cause he, he would come watch, um, did the two hour drive at, you know, eight years old or however old he was. Um, and then that was it. We did it. And Chi Chi got five goals. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Just right, insane. Five goals in a game seven championship yeah. game. Like yeah. that's just, uh, that was, that was game, on, that's been on TV a few times. Right. I actually watched that game the other night. Uh, yeah. With hey. Kojiko four or whatever. Yeah. Or, yeah. Whatever. Kojiko Belleville station, whatever it is. Wow. That game seven. Uh, so yeah. that game, that game uh, kind of sucked for me because I hardly played. Yeah. That, I, I played the whole playoff, but that game, just the, the way it went, it was – Chichu was riding high, right? So, well, yeah, you know, he scored five goals. Right? Yeah, and then once the Memorial Cup came, and, like, then I, I was playing a ton in the Mem Cup just because, like, the injuries we had yeah. when, they, when they were taking our players out, right, Chichu mm -hmm. being one of them. Who, who nailed him? I think it was uh, – oh, uh, Lacroix. Uh, from uh, Acne Bathurst took out yeah. Chichu with a knee, and then Lance Galbraith took out Papano with an elbow. Yeah, really. How well, hot was Papano yeah. during that playoff run? When I looked at that, I think he had like he averaged over two points a game. Fifty-one in the playoffs. points. Fifty-one points. points. And the next closest guy is Chichu, like thirty-six. Like, how hot was he really? during that run, man? That, that, that was it. He was on That's fire. Insane. Yeah, he's on fire in the playoffs. Like back in the day when it was like you could like you get away with a lot of shit. Yeah. You know, and remember, he wasn't a big guy either, right? No, mm -hmm. no. Yeah, yeah, you know, he now, wasn't big. What happened? Did something happen at Memorial Cup with your motel or your hotel? Yeah, Didn't yeah. So it, it was there? a shithole, man. It was a shithole. There was it was all under renovations. It was a it was a disaster. Yeah, yeah. That's I think that... we ended up moving uh, to another hotel after, but they gave us the shittiest room. They gave they didn't give us a dressing room at the Civic really? Center, whatever it's called. Yeah, no, it was like not a storage room, but. We were sitting on chairs. Yeah, it wasn't a dressing room. So they tried to treat you guys, even though you won the, because you know that you, you were you beat them out. So it's like, hey, That's we got to get an advantage somewhere. Where uh, I mean, now you have people here, complaining man. and everything, but yep. back then that was part of the game, right? Like, yeah, you, you know, know what Rut used to do? No, he used to take uh, sand, very little, and oh, put, put it, it on the on their bench. I I think <laughs> Rut told me that actually. Yeah, he told me that. <laughs> Yeah, I think he told us that. So, our uh, one of our uh, old buddies, we don't see him anymore, but his mom dates Rut, or was anyways. So, okay. I, we used to go to his house, but that's a while ago, eh, Plum? Oh, yeah, like that's 10 years, years ago now, ago. right? Yeah. yeah. So, he used to tell us some stories, but that one sounds really familiar. Yeah. The sand, because it screws up the blades, right? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, that's, like, that's a greasy one, too, because like, <laughs> you're never going to know. Like, how, yeah. you'd have to, like, what do you sleep oh, it? Absolutely. Like, um, I don't know. It, that's, was, it was old school, man. Yeah, that's awesome though. <laughs> um, what what else you got, Flem? It's uh, nine ten. You want to? Uh, are you good? Yeah, or you wanna... or... Yeah, I got a couple minutes. Absolutely. 
You got a couple well, of minutes? What yep. was the party like after you guys uh, beat London in game seven? Uh, unreal. So basically, um, I remember it was my brother-in-law there, my dad, um, and then my girlfriend. And all I remember is, so we all, when we came into the room, we all had uh, the hats, I think a t-shirt, and each of us had the big ball of champagne. And I don't remember too much. I remember Mezzi sitting in the shower with half his gear on. Okay, drinking the champagne. <laughs> the, awesome. shower, the shower wasn't on, I don't think. He was just sitting there, or maybe it was. <laughs> and all I remember is taking uh, the champagne and pouring it over my girlfriend's head. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah but it was awesome. It was just such a celebration. Uh, little Texas that night, obviously. Oh, little tease. Uh, yeah, little tease <laughs> that night. But then because uh, we went to game seven, it was within a couple of days we were in Ottawa. You're gone, so you got to get yeah. right back focused. And, yeah, uh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But it was uh, it was a time of my life, you know, especially to share with those guys and, and the Vaughn family. Uh, again, they treated us like gold, eh? Like yeah, absolutely like gold, like, yeah. Like, like you said, it's all family, right? And it, it's, it's all it's, family. It's shitty when things change too like that, you know, ownership, and then you get a new coach. It, it, really, it wasn't family. Everybody's, everybody's, you know – I don't know. It's definitely tough. I, I kind of had something minor like that when I played junior and it was like, you're used to something, everything's going good. And then there's a change and you're like, what the fuck is and this? A it just doesn't, it too. just, it, yeah. it, and yeah, you don't enjoy it. It's just, you don't enjoy going to the rink as much too. Right. So that's, that's the worst. Obviously it didn't change when you were there, but obviously the guys after, but. Some guys after it, it also rattled me. You, you could tell. Yeah. This you know what I mean? Like it, it really did. Yeah. You can tell it was a family, too, because what other owner in the league would go down and stitch people up, like, uh, mid-game, right? Like, I know where we had tickets. Doc That's Vaughn it. probably sat, like, 10 rows below us, and every time the light would come on, he would get up, and he'd leave, and he'd go, you know, give you stitches or whatever. And That's right. He sat, what, he sat right, uh, right in the middle of the rink. Uh, Section 7. Right. Yeah, yeah, and, and it was on the, yes, exact opposite side of the home bench. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, every time there was he wanted to be a part he, of the people. He'd sprint back up the stairs and run right down and... <laughs> Absolutely, but That's just think nice. about it. He was the owner of the team and wanted to be a part of the people. Yeah. yeah. Right? And right. that's what it's about, right? And that's and what that's gets sad. people to the game. Because they're like, yeah. you know what? I respect this guy. He respects us. He's yeah. not thinking he's bigger than me. He's not sitting up there in a box or whatever. He's in there that's talking to everybody. You know, and then everybody's like, you know what? This is – and that's what makes it, you know, a community team, right? And, and you're right. We're missing that right now with the Bell Sense. It's not even close. And, and I talked to uh, a couple of guys. And, and they like that were with the Bulls back and then you'd know them. I'm not going to bring their names up, but they worked there and they wouldn't hire them because the Belleville Sens said, Oh, we, we don't want to hire too many guys. We don't want to, we're not the Bulls, we're the Sens. We want to be connected. Abs to the Sens. Absolutely. And I looked at that and I'm like, You guys are idiots. You yeah. should be connecting with the Bulls because that's what people remember Absolutely. and that's what they want. You should Absolutely. be doing as much as you can. You should yeah. be having like a Bulls night where you have Bulls yeah. out. And you're going to connect with the fans, right? Yeah, so absolutely. absolutely. It's too bad they don't do that. I mean, it, it, I, I think they're sad. missing out on a huge opportunity here. Absolutely, Remember absolutely. the 90, especially the, the 99 Bulls. Remember yep. them. Have them back. Let's yep. wear the Bulls jerseys one night. Yep. You know, just uh, bring that, that, that type of, totally. you know, family stuff that the old totally people remember. And then, totally and, and then that's how you kind of get them hooked to the – to the that's thing, it. Well, right? you just have to remember, Bevel Matter Hockey, it's still the balls. It's yeah. junior balls, yeah. right? Like, enough said, right? Exactly. Like, so, you're, oh. you're right. I never thought about that. That'd be something great, eh, if they did something like that. Yeah. I think they'd have a, a lot more respect for the fans, too, and it would just kind of bring everybody back, right? Um, but that's definitely not the case. No, right now it isn't, but hopefully in the future we'll see what happens. And right, uh, you never know, boys. You never know. Anything can happen, yeah. right? They they left, they can come back. I wouldn't be surprised over the next five to ten years. Um, that's you know, the set Belleville senators are gone, and uh, that's the case. Well, then we'll see. Yeah, I th I think so too. I don't think I don't think um, that rink will be empty too long if the Sens left. To oh, be honest, there'll, there'll the be somebody in there. That, so. no, not with the renovations, and I think they know they can have the fan support. Um, you never know. It'd be nice for some, maybe the old NHLers that were that were here, right? Um, maybe they get a group together, right? Like that. That would be a dream. That would the be Crawford absolutely. family. You never know, right? Yeah. Now, just one question here. Like we we talked about earlier about the, adapting to the game, and I, I probably already know your answer, but who, who's who would adapt that played back when you played to today's game the best? Who would who would have the best chance? Like uh, for me, said, Nate, Rob Nate Robinson. Yeah, that was my guess. Yeah. Just mm -hmm. because, like. Like, I remember hearing him on Coach's Corner, Don Cherry saying, like, Nate Robinson, this guy's the future, this guy's that. And yep. he didn't pan out in the NHL. Yep. Like, he had a nice yep. pro career and everything. 
But yeah. like I look at him and I remember how fast that guy was like lightning. And when he lightning. when he got going, like when he was going yeah. down that way, everybody's up on their seat, like, what's gonna happen? Oh, yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? Like they're like, holy shit, right? And another guy before your time was Richard Park. And he yes. was kind of like they that compared too. Him to, they they compared were like the same. Absolutely. And so it, if you ever watched me, okay. So if you ever watched me in warm up. Yeah. Uh, after when at the end of the warm up, when when you did the half moon and everybody kind of just one shot after another on the goalie, I'd always I never do that. I'd always do saucer passes to it, it was Newberry and then it became stage. Okay, um, and my dad, you know, obviously he didn't need to ask me. But a lot of people ask me like, why don't you shoot? Why are you doing these stupid saucer passes? And then I go, well, it's very simple. I get the puck on the hash mark in my own zone. I'm saucing it to, to the chocolate rocket. To the you open space. I, mean? yeah. <laughs> I love that one. I've never it's heard of that one. Yeah. No, he rocket. had it on his side. So he no had way. Two, so that's, that was his nickname? So he had two two nicknames. And yeah. this was on his stick. Like So basically, oh back God. in the day, you used to have like uh, the shaft and then the blade. You yeah. used to get your names on the blades. Yeah. Mine yeah. was just simply, see, Renzi. Yeah. He had two different names. Okay. It used to be C- Rocket, see rocket. Okay, and then he'd have that. He'd have that on his blade. Okay, yeah. like that. Yeah, and then uh, B magic, black magic. Yeah. Oh, black <laughs> magic! No way! I love. I love the chocolate rocket though. Like, yep. I don't know. I've that's never so heard that was his and, and that's what he was though. He was like a cannonball, right? And like he holy was. shit, when he could go, he could go. That's and then it. back then, you could hook and hold, and you know, you could get him off his game. I I think if he was the guy to play now, superstar, I think he's fucking dominant. Like honestly, like, yeah. it's yeah. too bad when you look at different eras and different guys and i'm sure Absolutely. there's big guys now that would be way better back when of in, in the 90s right of course of course, or, or of course. no he jumped uh, he jumped ship early he didn't like the up and down and the grind of the a and nhl um yeah so he went to europe and, and made his made his career there and played he for put, a long career he put yeah he played a while there didn't he he's still there now running uh i think a hockey school and stuff Oh, is he? Yeah. yeah. In, now, do you ever keep in touch with those like guys like that? Absolutely, or? through Facebook. Oh, yeah. Absolutely, I do. Yeah. Facebook too, eh? yeah. yeah, and like Matty, Matty Stage and your other line mate there, like he had a great NHL career. Yeah, I don't talk to him, but he had a yeah. great NHL career. I mean, you know, um, yeah. played for some like, Canadian I, teams too. Like, what a story! His story, yeah. you know. And I'm just happy I, I was a part. Of it. I sat beside him. And now he played major midget one year too, didn't he? Didn't he come back after the OHL draft year? Because I think Andrew Shaw did that too. And, and I yeah, know what I played. When I coach Quinny, like, if you went and play, like, I play major midget myself, but yeah. coaching kids, oh, I can't go back. And I'd say, you know what? Yeah, okay, maybe it's not a big step forward, but there's guys that play in the NHL that did. I know totally. Shazi did, and I'm pretty sure Stajan did. And I, then I'm went to the Bulls. Yep. Yeah. No, I, I'm almost positive. Um, there, there's late bloomers out there. Exactly. You, you know, that's just, that's just the way it goes sometimes. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah, so it was good. Well, anyways, one quick story before we go. Um, yeah. and, uh, this is how, like, I remember I was a kid. So like I said, we look up to the bulls. I was at pizza pizza one day. I don't know if you're going to remember this pizza pizza was takeout only. Right. So I got a slice of pizza. I'm 10, maybe 11 or 12 years old. And I, I'm down to extra large. Certain, <laughs> I don't know if I'm eating a slice or a whole pizza. I got pizza all over my face. Who walks around the corner? You and probably your girlfriend at the time, Rocket Blonde. And, Whatever, and, yeah. And I, I'm just like, oh, Renzi, Renzi. And you're like, hey, buddy, what's going on? You know? And I'm sitting there, pizza all over my face. You're, like a girl. you're probably wanting to go home with her right away. But you sat there and you talked to me like you knew me, like you, you know, that, that's like what we it's are all today. About. And it's like, really, that's what it's all about. And I think that's why a lot of people love you in Belleville and really like you because, yeah, you know, you. you'll sit and spend the time whether it's a hockey guy or it's somebody, you know, a kid or whatever. And yeah, that's that's, that's what a lot of people like, right? And especially when you're a hockey player and they'll get yeah. to go to games like, oh shit, now I like that Renzi guy, right? Like, Absolutely. Talk, you know, so yeah. I, I don't know. I just, I remember that Even, story. Uh, well, thanks. Funny, Jeffrey, you know, um, I got pizza all well, over my face. And, you know, it's so funny because my, my girlfriend mentioned it, mentioned to me, I think it was only like last week. Uh, we were talking about something. She goes, you know what I really like about you? And I'm like, I don't know. Okay. She's like, like you say hi to everybody and how nice you are, like just to strangers and going to Walmart and talking to people, you, you know, um, kindness goes so far. You, you know what I mean? It, 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 it really does. Kindness and manners, you, you know, uh, you know, it, it really in plainness takes you through life, especially in this town, you know, yeah, like, for sure. you know, and this, everybody knows everybody here, you, you know? So, um, but that's why I love this town. That's why I, I stayed. Right. Yeah, you know, well, that's awesome. it, it, it was Toronto a, boy coming down here and playing four years of junior, and then, uh, yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, it's it's absolutely. getting a little late, but uh, 
Uh, we appreciate you coming on today. Well, I appreciate it. Please, anytime, fellas, you have no idea how much it means to me to come yeah. back and talk about it, right? I so, think we'll definitely any, have anytime. to do another one because we got we didn't even really get into what you know the the pro the little bit of pro you played and all that. And I'm sure there's more mm -hmm. whole stories. So um, absolutely, we'll, we'll do it another day for sure. Yeah. Um, I, I would love it. And I think one day it would be nice if uh, you got two of us on. I think that'd yeah. be even hilarious. Well, what what would you do, you and Newberry? Something like that? Yeah, that would be a good one. Like something like that? And then you could tell some <laughs> yeah. stories and, I yeah. don't know, just thinking yeah. off the top of my head. You get two two or yeah. three Bud Lights in them and then we'll have a good time. Oh, I'm <laughs> and, yeah, Talk yeah. about the chocolate rocket a little bit too. And... <laughs> chocolate, chocolate. Oh, my God. I can't believe you've heard that name for it. It's so funny. I've never heard of that one. And he had Buddy, it on, he had it on his blade. I swear to God, C Rocket. So he loved yeah. it. But that's, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, I think that's awesome. Well, that's what it was all about, man. <laughs> you know? Uh, but thanks, fellas. I really appreciate you having me on. It means a lot. No, no, no thank it. you. Bye. We appreciate it. We'll have you again for sure. Yeah. All right. See you, fellas. Take care, man. Bye, bye guys. Bye. bye. All right, guys. Welcome back. We hope you enjoyed that interview with Michael Renzi. Um, he is quite the character. He's known in Belleville, played four years for the Belleville Bulls. I know we had a ton of laughs, and uh, some of the sayings and whatnot he has are pretty funny, and I know he has lots more to bring. Um, we're going to try and bring him on with possibly one of his ex mates for Belleville Bulls in the upcoming future. So uh, thanks, Renzi, for that, and we look forward to hearing from you in the future, bud. Um, but to go on with that, guys, uh, we would like to, uh, to talk about um, our partner company, Pay It Forward Sports. We uh, announced on Saturday – uh, well, we kind of released it via YouTube, right, um, that we, we had our first tournament planned. And on Sunday, we actually gave out the full details. Um, within four to six hours, we were full. Our, our, our tournament was full, and I think six, officially in about six hours yeah. um, from the time we uh, released all the details, how much it costs, um, that stuff. Um, so that's awesome. We thank you guys for supporting us. Um, we're going to do whatever we can for the community to get adults playing back sports. Um, there is going to be more, there is going to be some kids tournaments and there is going to be some women in the future. We are working on that. Um, but we also are working on another tournament. We would like to do five on five in April. Um, doesn't look like it's going to happen, but we are going to have a tournament. It may be four on four um, because of COVID. You can only have so many players and all that stuff. So we are working on that. And hopefully within a week, we can release that. Hey, eh, buddy? Yeah, for sure. So like Jeff said, we did want to do a five on five with all the pro COVID precautions going on right now. We can't have too many people in a room or too many people in a building at one time. So we are looking at other options. We are going to run a tournament, a bigger one divided up at separate ranks is what we're thinking about doing. But yeah, we just want to thank the community. We want to thank everyone who uh, inquired. I know there were some people that couldn't get in and they were disappointed, but uh, just hang in there with us the next week or two. We'll announce our next one. And uh, anyone who didn't get in, jump into this next one. It's going to be tons of fun. And we just want to thank the community and everyone who, uh, Who's, who's choosing to participate. Like everyone said, we are going to give a, uh, a part of all our proceeds back into getting kids into sport too. So by you coming out and playing, you are indirectly helping kids get into sports. Now, if you're not only a hockey fan and you like other sports, guys, this isn't going to be only hockey tournaments. Um, we're trying to get some hockey tournaments in while we can, obviously, you know, for the end of the year, but we are looking into a pile of different sports. We have, we, we, hopefully in the next month, we're going to have a bunch of them uh, uh, finished, but we're looking into the things like volley, beach volleyball, uh, basketball, golf, ball baseball. hockey, um, and baseball, and, and along with other things. Um, and then obviously uh, some, a lot of hockey come next uh, fall and winter. So we have a lot planned for you guys and we can't wait to get, to get rocking. Um, this has been a phenomenal start with us. Um, and we also are going to have uh, just to touch on the, go back to the, um, the boo club. We are going to have more guests. Our plan is to have a guest every Wednesday. So stay tuned, make sure you like us on Facebook, like us, uh, follow us on Instagram. And of course, subscribe to us on YouTube. Yeah, guys, so that wraps up the uh, this episode of the Battle of Ontario podcast. We want to thank everyone for tuning in. Please hit us up on our socials. Uh, we're on Instagram, Facebook, our website, uh, payitforwardsports.ca. If you have any questions or anything you want to bring up about the podcast, send us an email at info at payitforwardsports.ca, and uh, we can bring any fan questions up on future shows. But uh, thanks for tuning in. That's all we have for today, guys. Thanks, Mike Renzi, for, uh, for coming on. We really appreciate that. And, uh, yeah, go Bulls, go. All right, thanks for tuning in, guys. And Brokey, are you in? The Boo Club.